house party and of course everybody on youtube who's looking on their big screen the big tvs some of you watching on the little phone and uh, on the facebook but welcome to bird's house party and uh, that was ian wall did that as well and it's funny what ian wall does but ian wall can i just ask you where's the first bit ladies and gentlemen i'm just saying you and for all those people yeah. listening out there ian wall that wasn't as good as it should have been. I know you're working and you're at work now. Just when you watch this, I'm just moaning again. He's, uh, he's my producer, uh, editor, uh, whatever word we're going to say, which is not what you are, Mike, who's listened to me before he cuts me out. Who's on today? We're going to say hello to Dan Looney, who's a producer, composer and actor. Neil Waistcoat, who's a resident drummer. Uh, a dear old mate, probably my best friend, I would say, is entrepreneur, whatever the word is. Interpreter, whatever, I'll come back with that word. Neil Davy, And also we've got another addition to uh, Are You Smarter uh, Than Claire Gibson? So let's say hello to everybody. Give me a little wave so we can make sure everyone's watching. Let me have a look. There's Neil Westgate, Dan Looney, Lynn Orca. Hello, Lynn. And Hi, Neil Davey. Neil, can you wave, mate? Yes. Sorry. Right. Yeah, you've got, you've got to like you're enjoying it, Neil. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of you all and then come back with everybody. Thank you for joining us. There they are, Neil David. See, I'll tell you about my mate, Neil. I mean, when I used to do the live feeds, he used to come on, oh, Mark's going live. And he wouldn't give me 10 seconds, 15 seconds, because, yeah, I'm fed up now, and turn me off. And that's the only way I'm able to let him watch is actually bring him on. Now, we've got some birthday shouts. <laughs> Ian Wall, doesn't matter. Don't try to come, come back to me now. Make your ready mind. Now, Ian, obviously I want, ladies and gentlemen, I need the first bit. Uh, but anyway, keep your nose out there, Ian. You don't have conversations while I'm trying to talk. It's birthdays. We've got Chantel Wing. Happy birthday. Gemma Gallant. Wendy Musson. Hey, that's Wendy. Wendy to all the family, to you. And, of course, her daughter, Katie, who's had a baby. Looks fabulous, by the way. Uh, Wendy, happy birthday to you. Stephen Mendes and James Wilde, who's 30. Who else? I, I sent a video today to Sarah, who was 30. But I read the message wrong from Tara, and uh, I saw her say, and I didn't read it right, so I sent a, a video to Sarah, say, happy 18th birthday. And what it was, she came when she was 18, but now she's 30. And then in that time, she's been the cow in the, my Brewers Unleashed or whatever. But I never read it. So not only did I say happy birthday, happy 18th, I had to send another video when I realised mistake. So she got two. I can't believe it. Saying happy 30th. So Sarah, big happy 30th birthday to you. Sarah's Hindu, of course, Sarah Sullivan, who uh, lives on a farm. And uh, we know the Sullivan from Kim, Paul, all the family, and it goes on and on how long we've known this family. But Sarah was supposed to be at Potter's on a hen do this weekend. I gave her a call. I don't know whether I cheered her up. I don't know. I did send a video, though, to uh, Bob. Bob, Grandad Bob, who's all the Tom's family, and that's Ellis and, and uh, Chelsea. Again, family that always come to Potter's. And he's in hospital with the virus. So, Bob, keep breathing, mate. We'll be happy back when we're back open and we'll love to talk to you. Now, lots of people saying hello. Sal Saunders, Janice Cooper, Scott Botel. Hello, everyone. I didn't realise there was a long, long list, even Claire Gibson. Um, so uh, also, I'm, I meant to give a shout out for the Honey Lane Care Home that uh, Ellie Greenslade sent me a message that she, uh, she loves it. They're so under pressure, and they need a good shout out to make sure that, that we all recognise this. We know what pressure is on the care homes, and 
as important to all of us as an HS, the care workers, the key words. So a big shout out for Honey Lane Care Home at Waltham Abbey. That's near you, Neil, isn't it? Claire Gibson's having my henna pods next April. Are you excited, bro? No, not really, Claire, because if it, you'll be coming for your <laughs> hendo, I'm going to get those questions so you get them right. We want you better than that. So what else did we have? Oh, did you know for you last week, we raised, uh, we, we got a young lady called Casey on our show, and she mentioned that she's walking up and down her garden for the Ritson Lodge care home, which is at Hopton. And she said, I'm trying to set the target at 500. Well, within like 10, 15 minutes, she was gone past 500 pounds. She was up to 800 pounds. And then she's moved the target again. She moved it to 1,000 pounds. Now she's moved it again. This is unbelievable all the week. She has finally come over 1,700 pounds. And all she was trying to do was get them a te telly. Well, forget the telly. They're going to go now. They've sent a message for dementia-friendly dolls as well. And I don't know what that is, but I'm sure we're going to bring on the Casey and her mum to explain what that all means. But they are dementia-friendly dolls as well. So a great big thank you for everyone that donating to Casey's cause. And uh, she was a little angel. So I think I've done my shout-outs. Oh, Louise and Adam, it's your anniversary. And that's the Colonel Mustard daughter. Uh, all the family, it's your anniversary. And I loved your T-shirts husband and wife thing so there we are let's talk to our very first guest who apparently is a producer a composer archer now when i say apparently i know he's a producer i mean he's way up there and uh composer i'm not sure about that one an actor well i've seen him be in the book of mormons so yes he was in the west end he was a regular visitor to potters so i'm going to welcome to the house party mr dan looney Woo! dan hello Hi, Mark. And you're, you've got the cap on what? To, to, to try and look younger? I just haven't bothered to do my hair once during lockdown. And it's kind of got into this weird, like, hat hair. So I just yeah. haven't bothered anymore. And it's no, nice. Put the, put the hat on. It is scary, oh, no. Dan. Chicago club. Right. Here we go. Bad. <laughs> now, Dan, your family had come to Potters, I don't know. I mean, I've known all of you. I've seen you grow up, haven't I? Yeah. Uh, my mum was pregnant when... Uh, with me when she first went so yeah. I've, I've been there for years and i've got like i said I've, I've always said to you we've got so many videos of us with you and me as like a kid me falling uh -huh. off the stage at the old theater um yeah. there's, there's, we've, we've been with you guys for so long and it's uh you know it's uh it, it's know, amazing you got sister georgia and uh we met them all only was it the very last weekend that Pop last weekend that? before it all got shut down yeah how coincidental is that do you think that you're a little bit of a curse <laughs> potentially potentially now let's just shout out what of you i produce i mean i can say the rock of ages yes uh rock of ages um curtains, curtains which just finished with jason manford we did company in the west end uh fame uh yeah there's there's there's, there's, a, there's a good amount of shows that we've done in the last couple of years so and so yeah i mean that was fantastic we went to see your premiere at for the wedding singer you didn't even bring that one up because that, that was, was that, the, that was one? the first one. Oh yeah it's, it's got good and bad memories so sometimes you just, it just escapes yeah. the brain but yeah um, you did you did come to that I, I, did. I, I actually really enjoyed it claire and i absolutely loved it and we do thank you but you only invited us to one and i want to point out that <laughs> all the other premieres you've actually invited better and more powerful friends so i'm just saying you've got a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so no. i'm just pointing it out no, no taken you know take it out but no fantastic and we're very proud of you we also came to see you do book of mormons yeah that was a that was a crazy yeah. show that was a crazy show that, that was, was the most the most tiring year of my life was that your first, was that your first show straight out of art said you was at art said wasn't you uh no it wasn't that that was about uh three or four years after i graduated but it was okay. i would say the first big west end show that i did um yeah. And it was uh, it was amazing. I mean, a beautiful theatre sold out every night. Throughout the whole run that we were there, we had not one unsold ticket. I mean, you saw the show, so you know what the show's like. So we used to have a lot of people leaving at the interval, but so, no, you know, they didn't realise exactly what it was about. I'm seeing Daniel Orca saying she loved Rock of Ages. These people, yes. have seen it. you've got to remember. Yeah, um, well, I, I, back 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 in 2021, guys. So well, sure if, if, if the theatres are open. 
And so how is that then? So, I mean, what is the situation? I mean, you probably know more than most of us. I mean, how bad is this? Are we, I mean, you do know only Fools and Horses are shouting out now for September or October. I think they're hoping. Yeah. Everyone's we hoping. Hope, we would hope that the West End will be open again around then. I mean, who knows? We have we have no idea. We've, we've moved most of our shows back into 21. Um, yeah. But I don't know because, you know, I don't want to get too political. It's a fun show. But we, we don't, until we are told what's going on and what they want to do, we have no idea. Um, mm. Yeah, because there's a lot of people in a small space. Yeah. And, and um, you know, it, it's about getting that confidence back. But certainly we, we've gone through a tough time and a lot of my colleagues and friends are going through rough times with it. So, you know, if people can support the theatre when it comes back, it's hugely appreciated. No, I think so. we will. I think it's just the, it's the cure, isn't it? Or the vaccination or yeah. something to help us to make sure we'll be calm. We don't mind someone coughing in our ear. I mean, how many times have you sat in a, in a theatre and someone <laughs> please on your shoulder or someone's cough? And now they're doing it, you'd be like getting a gun out and shooting them, wouldn't you? I mean, it's that sort of like... Banning, medical... banning coughing and banning opening sweet packets. If we oh. can do that. That'd be great, wouldn't it? That'd be great. I can't stand that. So, what I was going to ask about: what is the composer bit? I mean, when you put on your profile, and of course you've got to remember, people like professional people open up and see producer, actor, and I, I've seen all that. But composer, and I notice you've got a piano behind you. I mean, is that something that you do? Is yeah, that... I've been doing that for years, Mark. You should know that. But no, but composing. Come on now. Yes, I... I have. Yeah, I've written two musicals, both of which, uh, well, one of which is uh, hopefully going to be producive in the next couple of years. The second one is on the back burner. But then I also, you know, I was writing for different artists and uh, wrote a bit for Universal. So again, I'm not, I'm not rich. No, I've, nothing's happened. So I'm probably not a great composer, but who knows? No, Who knows? I was intrigued because didn't you do Excalibur? Was that my head? I yeah, think? Excalibur 93 was one song that I wrote in a musical which kind of went viral. Um, yeah. It's still yeah. sung across the world, which is cool. It's kind of cool. You know, it's a really, you know, to, to create something. And that was me and my brother, Reese, who you know, as you know, he's a primary school teacher. He's got no, he doesn't yeah. even like musicals. We wrote that song and, and then it kind of went places in the theatrical world, which was really nice. Wow. Um, so, you know. It's good fun, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, one of my uh, one of my um, childhood when you was child, you actually got up with was it Tom? You got up on stage, Ben. ben. Um, was it Ben who could play guitar? I'm just thinking. Yeah, like, yeah, um, Ben who played guitar, and I sang. And on the day West Ham had lost, and it was a talent <laughs> show. And the cheeky kids, these two cheeky kids came up, and do you remember what he said? I do. We did a, we did a, we did three songs. We did a medley. The first one was um, well because because Mark had always done this thing of uh, of making a gay joke between me and Ben because we were both young boys who had, didn't have girlfriends. Um, so we so we thought what I'd do is I'd start the medley by singing "You're Beautiful" dedicated to Mark, and then we changed the lyrics to the second song, which was a song called "Certain Shade of Green," which we changed all the lyrics to West Ham losing that day. And then just as Mark got back up on stage, we we changed it into Daniel Palter's "Bad Day," which. Which <laughs> have a bad day, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, which which went nicely. Um, and and it weird how you then uh, we would never have thought at those early periods that now you've you you are a well known producer. I wouldn't say that you know probably most people would know anybody in the business would probably know of Dan Looney. So that's fantastic, really, isn't it? That you you know and and it's and you probably in your time lost some money as well, haven't you? Lost <laughs> some money. I've yeah, lost so true, much yeah. money. It's untrue. <laughs> if it, they said they said be a producer, you'll get rich, and 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 that's not that's not yeah. the case. That's not the case. You've you've got you've got to find that one. You've got to find a lame is. You get that, you'll be rich. That's what that's what it is. And that's when that composer's coming in, isn't it? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> the pressure on you now. You've got plenty of time on your hands, uh, Dan. Well, I know. I know. Well, this 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 one's new. I bought it for lockdown because I'd oh. moved all of my piano stuff over to the office in central London, and now we can't be there. So we we bought this, and I've got two. I've got uh, you know, I, I live with my girlfriend Grace, who you know very well. Um, yeah. And then I've got two housemates, one of which is in Dear Evan Hansen yeah. in the West End, and the other one was just in the show called Be More Chill. So it's a very musical house. So we've said that we're going to write stuff. We just haven't had a chance yet. It's oh. actually been very busy. Isn't it weird how we all adapt very quickly in a lockdown and you suddenly say, there's no time. And you go, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. 
<laughs> no. But I'm sure it'll happen. Dan, it's you are an angel for coming on to say hello to us all. Uh, no, no, thank you for having me. Give a big hug to uh, the kid. You know I mean, like your, your, your daughter. Oh, no, not your daughter. You're not, you're not married, are you? You've never I've married Gracie, have you? <laughs> no, bring that one up. I've always teased you about Grace. <laughs> proposed if you're fed up doing that. <laughs> <laughs> always dig it in. She's no. sitting there right now. She can't hear anything because I've got the earpods in. But oh, well, um, it. it's talking about me not proposing to you yet. It's back to that yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Georgia and Mum and Dad, give all your love to all the family and I will um, do. cross the fingers and hope we get back sooner than later. Don't forget my premiere tickets and don't forget right. my daughter Sky to put her in a show. I'm just pointing this out, mate. These are the things that pop them out. And can you write a song for Roddy? Roddy's going to write you a song because he's that's what he's up to, Roddy. Great. Great. All, we'll tell, it's only a list. It's only a list. Yeah. Little thing. I'll write it down. Got, <laughs> Dan, take care, mate. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Proper, mate. Yeah. Composer and uh, actor and uh, also producer hi gail pedophile could be back i missed a few days but you're still looking much the same like a monk that's my wife but gail don't don't upset my wife gail you know that and i could say to you gail where the hell have you been then because we've done a quiz in that and thousands of people came and had a go at that where have you been that's what i want to know um so with everyone else um let's have a look let's bring our resident drummer for everyone because i want to leave the best mate to the end so he feels like you know wanted because he <laughs> he would actually go by now so neil westgate resident drummer over 30 how many years you've been almost as long as me neil 30 years mark 1989 30 years and you join and did you join us in the small cabaret bar yeah yes um actually when i joined um they'd just done some they just made the old cabaret bar a slightly bigger cabaret bar um, but yeah. it was long, sometime before they actually knocked it all down and built the atmosphere, which we were all involved in. Fantastic atmosphere. And of course, yeah. as we go with you, Neil, I mean, we've known you for so long. You are godfather to our, one of our children, mm -hmm. Sky. Yeah. Um, um, I'm not saying um, that's been very good. You haven't sort of done anything to help us yet. <laughs> I've been pretty useless, it has to be <laughs> said. <laughs> I think you've had the odd. You've had the odd coffees in the bowlers bar. I think that's all what you've had. A little chat. Yep. That's about yep. it, really. <laughs> but thanks for that, mate. I like so that. Christine Mostyn Bly says you're a brilliant drummer. Um, Carol Patience. These are all people you all know. Neil's a great person. Oh, uh, bless. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say, well, we wouldn't have asked him to be a godparent if we didn't think he was a good person. Now, with all that, with all that, um, you actually also uh, tried your hand at gardening, haven't you? Um, well, I yeah, I do a bit of gardening. <laughs> um, I mean, it's almost like Neil, you knew the coronavirus was coming, and you knew COVID nineteen was coming, and you said, "I've got to have another career." So you actually got trained. I mean, you actually got examined and everything, didn't you? RHS level two. I mean, it's not you know top of the tree. It's not Alan. T I'm not Alan Titchmarsh. Let's let's put it like that. No, <laughs> but no. um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've got a bit of a clue. Um, which helps. Um, and uh, yeah, so I set up, set up the business. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's, it, it may help in this situation because the, the business hasn't dropped off, which is, uh, which is really yeah. good. The business is the same, but um, the standard of living is definitely dropping off. <laughs> Don't we know we're all in the same boat. And, and also you met your wife at Potter, didn't you? Please tell Neil I'm sorry. Rebecca, she's a bitch, isn't she? Oh, oh, you, you and I know what uh, actually, you know. I think I remember uh, a party in Davy Pie. Anyway, yeah. we won't go there. It was, <laughs> how weird world that she pops up and we've got Neil Davy on in a minute. And uh, that's <laughs> He never even was thinking of talking about the, the wild part. No, it wasn't a wild <laughs> part. It was chaos. It ended up in a food fight. That was <laughs> ended up in a food fight. A food fight. But, um, yes, you met the beautiful Patricia. I did. And she's from, is it Poland? What part of Poland? Um, Katowice. Can I say that I had something to do with that? I sort of made you push your way. Yeah, it was you and Johnny Mac, wasn't it? Yeah, saying, like, she's good. She's over. Good. She was lovely, gorgeous, and you sort of said you should you two should talk <laughs> <laughs> more than talk. You ended up marrying her, didn't Got you? Married, had a little boy. 
And of course, Bruno is magnificent, Bruno. isn't he? He's, he's learning the drums. We saw a great video. I wish I could have planned it so we could have seen it now because it was yeah. really tremendous. The band did a, a song. And you well, it's on the pot stream, isn't it? Yeah, it's on the pot of stream. Really comment. There out in the darkness, nice. a fugitive running. Hello, Mark. You are so desperate. No, we don't want you to hear you sing, James. Oh, hello, you. Neil. I'm missing you, mate. I'm missing you. I miss you having a laugh, and uh, I miss you, Mark, because you're my best friend. Neil's not your best friend, is he, Mark? No, no. My best man is my best mate coming on after you. Get off. <laughs> Get off, Jay. <laughs> oh, bless him. Um, Neil, just thinking about, um, yeah, Bruno, you actually, did you give him lessons or you just let him kick no, out? No, no, you can't, you can't pin him down. He just does what he wants when he wants. How old, how old is Bruno? Three? Three. Yeah, tremendous. Age. Yeah, we, we, had his, we had an isolation birthday on the 9th of April, which was just like just the three of us <laughs> sitting around a cake. Yeah, you're probably thinking that's not quite the same party we had last year. When no. We were... No, I know. I know. So what I was going to ask you, going back to that, you actually have, you stepped out for a tiny bit out of Potters to go to the West End, and I couldn't remember what show you was drumming. You were just... I, you were... I, did, I, I never actually drummed in, a, in any West End shows. Um, yes, but I did, did a fair bit of understudy, and thanks to Andy Mace, because um, yeah. I went down and um, uh, the Full Monty... Uh, we will rock you, you know. I mean, yeah. sat in with sat in on wheel, we'll rock you a few times. Um, got a great show to, to sit on, you know. You're sitting beside some greats there. Um, yeah, tell me on a Sunday with um, no, I thought I knew you was really sort of intrigued to see the levels and seeing how strong. Oh, no, it's great, it was a great experience to go down there, and it was getting to the point where. I was starting to get given the music for the shows, you know, to say, right, okay, go and do your homework and then we'll try yeah. you out in a few weeks and see how you get on and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but then um, then a cruise came up and I had never done a cruise um, and that was also something I wanted to do. Yeah. And I wasn't really being offered anything in the West End because the thing, the thing is with the musicians, the way it works is, you know, if you're available when they need you, you'll get put in as a depth and, and yeah. you'll work your way in. Um, yeah. And I was sort of kind of sitting there waiting for that to happen. Um, but then the cruise came up and Potters gave me the green light to, to go and do some cruising. And they said yeah. they'd keep the chair the chair open for me at Potters. So I went on the first cruise as a world cruise. How so fun. I went to the world for a few months instead, which was great. It, yeah, and a great experience. And, and just having a, a tiny little breathe away from Potters. Yeah, I mean, it was great to go away. It was fantastic to go away and see the world. But when yeah. you've been to a few places, you honestly, you really do appreciate what you've got when you, you know, when I know. you see a lot of places, you know. Uh, oh. You know, things that come to mind, like the townships in South Africa, yeah. for example, and Mumbai in, in India, yeah. you know. You, you really do sort of appreciate what you've got when you've seen that firsthand. Now, just before you go, and... and um... You uh, you had a rant, which made me laugh. laugh. <laughs> it, made me, it made me laugh for about I don't know, but I think my wife laughed for about twenty five minutes. So I had to say, "What are you laughing at?" And it was you ranting, having a good drink, of course, a big bottle yeah. of Jack Daniel. I've actually put a clean shirt on. Well, I've, I've got rid of the dirty t shirt and had a shave, Mark, and I've completely given up alcohol. Completely given up. I think up you had to after that rant and until Tuesday. I think we've got to click and collect. <laughs> <laughs> but we ran out. <laughs> and uh, you was ranting about Donald Trump, talking about the injection, about d injecting um, everybody with detergent. And then you said, like, how and how suspicious is the Chinese? Are very happy. And now, now, obviously, you're sober. I'll give you two seconds, for, like thirty seconds, to. Uh, redeem yourself is there anything what you feel was right what you're saying well now? after the ran after the ran i mean i kind of thought the next day i was i'd had a few i was a bit inebriated maybe i should pull it down and delete it but yeah. i kind of watched it back the next day and, and i thought well actually there is some vague truth in all this you know i mean you know i mean at the end of the day like we're on our knees you know china's recovered completely yeah. you know i'm not a conspiracy theorist i don't believe for one minute that they did this on purpose i really don't think they did it on purpose i think it came from a bat you know um whoever said uh 
one person couldn't change the world, never ate a half cooked bat, did they? Let's say. But um, yeah. yeah, so the Chinese, I think they're going to come out of this smelling of roses while the rest of us are on our knees. And, you know, without getting too political, that was kind of the gist of my rant. Um, yeah. And I sort of still stand by that, really. Oh, yeah, because you told everyone in your trying to, <laughs> we've all got to lose all got to learn, got oh no, we all got to learn Chinese. That's what you're telling learn us. Chinese. Well, well to... maybe not learn Chinese, uh, you know. Like, yeah. I don't think it's the end of the world, you know. I don't think it's the end of the world. Anyway, we don't, I, don't land normally, land. I, I didn't want to normally get this tea. I wasn't getting that tea. I was just winding you up the fact that you ranted. Um, but um, you know that my, my next guest... And my next guest, and there's a good reason because Neil had been to Potter's before, uh, you know, I think he, or me. We go back um, a long way. <laughs> we all go back a long way. And I thought to, you could personally say a quick hello before I just talk to Neil on my own. For everyone who don't know, he's an entrepreneur. He was Southeastern Electrical PLC. He uh, came with his family to Potter's. Uh, we watched his kids grow up. He invited me to West Ham and do the shows and do a hosting his box. He had a great big box on the Bobby Moore stand. Um, and we called it Alvin Martin Suite, I think. Uh, we had so much fun. I was his best uh, man at his wedding, and he took us to Ashford Castle. You personally want to say thank you for yeah, something that Neil might not be aware of. <coughs> Neil Davy, welcome. Welcome to my... Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Neil. How are you doing? Yeah, see, I was expecting a tiny little bit more from that, Neil. A bit, but were you listening to the conversation? I dozed off. I've just come back now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> a proper mate. Neil Westgate goes back with us as well. He, he used to go to West Ham. You opened um, you um, two West seasons. Thanks, Neil. Great days. Had a lot of fun. Yeah. Pleasure. Uh, with Andy Pleasure. Mace singing. But more importantly, Neil, before I get rid of Neil, um, Neil yeah. Westgate, he'd like to thank you for your car. Yeah, thanks for the use of your roller for my, for my wedding, Neil. I don't know whether you even know that you actually lent us that. I think Mark might have done a deal with your driver. <laughs> but, uh, I managed to get your Bentley up all the way up to Neil's wedding as a little favour. And he was kind of like, do you need it? And I said, no, I just need to have a look at that. I was promising. And I used it for Neil's wedding as he's driving. But I thought it's important that you know what type of mates we are. Oh, well, they one are. Another quick story, Mark. One other quick story. When you asked me to give you, you and Neil asked me to give you a lift to uh, Norwich Airport uh, because you were flying up to Sheffield to watch West Ham play Sheffield. We got to the airport, and I always remember you said to me, "Well, actually, someone said they couldn't come. Do you want to? There's a spare seat. Do I'm like, what? I'm, I'm coming. And when we got in the airplane, the spare seat was in the front with the pilot. I ended up flying the airplane up to Sheffield. You had probably the most wonderful day, didn't you, Neil? What yeah. a day. What a day. Neil Westgate, you are an angel. Thanks for coming on. Good luck to Tricia. Been Give a pleasure. Me. Thanks for coming on. Take care. So, uh, see you, Neil. Hello, Mum, Beatty Mum. Mum, 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 Mum. How are you? Um, uh, bum matey. Hello. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> we're the only two that talk to each other like that. And people go, what? <laughs> Why is people? That's how weird. But do um, you remember the Sheffield? Do I remember it? Yeah. Don't forget it, can we, really? I got you in trouble, didn't I? It started with a pilot saying, I can't land in the dark. I have to be back. You had to be back for nine o'clock. To work, so, yeah. So we had to be back, well, anyway, before the dark. And anyway, we didn't get back. He landed in the dark. But uh, do you remember Sheffield? Well, I know I just, you said to me, you've got me in so much trouble. You kept doing this. Mark, you're ringing me up going, you've, you've got me in trouble. You put me in trouble. But I remember some of it. But you were sponsoring the game. That's why we were going, wasn't it? Well, we went there. What, I, what I can remember is that the, the uh, chairman of Sheffield Wednesday, I think his name was Ken Bates, who was an MP. He was, he yeah. was deaf. Right. And uh, anyway, we got there. We got there uh, eventually. We, we went to watch the game. We just said hello to everyone. It was about... In the, uh, in the lounge, I think it was about 40, 50 people, all people that we work for, because we do a lot of work for uh, Midland Bank, which was based in Sheffield. Anyway, cut long story short, we went out to watch the game, and one of their players, if you can remember right, had to come off the pitch. Why? Well, because he got the runs, didn't he? <laughs> I mean, we, we couldn't believe it. He said, why are they something who's playing really well? And they went, oh, no, that, he's, had to, he's, got, he's got a dicky stomach, didn't he? 
Yeah, well, well, he actually booed himself on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. And, well, uh, I'm just that now. He'd, he'd been playing for about uh, fifteen minutes. Yeah. So the deal was with Sheffield Wednesday was at the end of the end of the game, we had to pick the man of the match, and we had a chat, and you went, "Why don't we pick the bloke who booed himself?" And I went, well, "If we can get away with that, that's lovely." So we put his name forward, and they they said he's coming up to get the man of the match award, and. Yeah. Uh, he come up before he come up. You was doing your speech, and you actually said, and this is what upset me. <laughs> we we just flew over your town, and it's a complete and utter shite hole. Yeah, and, and everyone hated you from that minute. Yeah, then you went into the kitchen. You come back out, and you had rubber gloves on, and a face mask. And the guy came in to collect his award, and you give it to him with a face mask and rubber gloves on. <laughs> Oh, I apologise. I, I was I was very reckless. I, I mean, I wouldn't have done that today, Neil. I would have done it. I would have done that today. But then you got your letter, didn't you? That's it. Saying that we're not welcome back and we could never sponsor another game at Sheffield Wednesday. Well, we didn't want to anyway, so it's fine. But, uh, yeah, that was that. I, I, I apologise for that one. But one of the biggest things you've done for us, and um, it was the London Palladium, wasn't it? Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. I don't. It was your bucket wish, I think. And I think, uh, I think the, the other part was that you had gone to Marlborough School and you was being kind of volunteer. You was actually going to pick a child, just one child, and treat that child at Marlborough School, which was special needs school, wasn't it? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And then you said to me, Mark, I couldn't pick one. I went, I can't pick one. I can't just pick one. I said, I'd, well, I'd, "Hang on, before you." It wasn't pick one. I mean, I didn't bring it home with me. No, no. You know, it was it was the sponsor one to go to Orlando because someone might get the wrong idea here. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, carry on. So anyway, you know, well, you could have carried on with there because you literally went. I couldn't pick. I couldn't have one to pick to send to Orlando. So I told the whole school they're all coming. I said, well, it was it was something. It was something like that. It was something like that. It was we 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 set a target of forty thousand pounds yeah with things we was going to do to raise money and and i said to you what do you think and that's i don't know how the palladium come into it but i know it was on your bucket wish well, so well, yeah i'll tell you why it came on it is because it's, the money was coming we was raising money for a year and uh, the money was coming in he said we need to make a big presentation of this and uh, how do we do it and i said well and i was jokingly saying like the London Palladium. I've always wanted to be there, Neil. And and it really was a joke. I wasn't actually saying I played him. It was just, you know, we, you know, but I said it was a dream of mine. And then you rang me up to say, uh, I've got, to, we're going down to Sterling Moss. I've got to chat to Sterling Moss. Not Sterling Moss, the, um, the Moss Theatres. Steer, Steer Moss, Steer Moss Theatres, yeah. 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 And you actually went to like, uh, and have arranged a meeting to see if we can do the London Palladium. And I still thought he was joking because, to be honest, we had so many wind ups together that we've been teasing. I still thought this was a wind up. So uh, you took it, didn't you, now? We got, um, it was me and Mark Holt, if you remember right. Yeah. He, he, oh, he put half the money up. And we, we booked it for the, was it the 9th of May? I think it was the 9th of May. It was 30, 30 years ago, anyway. Yeah. 90, yeah. 93. 1993, yeah. So we went to meet the uh, theatre manager and uh, we were on the stage of the London Palladium looking out and you went, this is unbelievable. And uh, and I said, so how are we doing? The, the theatre manager said, right, Mark, we, we're on, we're going to do it. What do you need? And you said, we need six hours to rehearse. And he went, that's impossible. Six hours. Do you know how much it costs an hour to rehearse? Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I don't know, it's a silly amount of money. You, yeah. you have to have sound, health and safety, uh, yeah. and lighting. Yeah. So he said, Jack Jones was here, he said, last Sunday. He said, and he had an hour, to, uh, you know, rehearsing. And then he got his band and, and he came, went to the hotel, came back and went on. So it was an hour with Jack Jones. And, and I said, right, okay, We've got the VIP lounge after. How much is a bottle of wine? The champagne. He went, well, a bottle of wine. I mean, we're going back 30, whatever yeah. years it was. He said, yeah. bottle of wine's 40 quid, champagne's 100 quid. I said, we're not going to do it. He said, well, Jack Jones, he said, an had an after-do uh, after party, come to three 300,000 pounds. 
And I went to the theatre, and you went, you went to the theatre manager, can we just go across the road, have a chat, and we'll come back to you and decide what we're going to do. So as we were walking across the road, you went, we're in it here. How are we going to get out of this? I went, well, I've got the answer. And you went, what is it? I said, you sort off, I'll get Jack Jones to do it. <laughs> and he said it. I was like, in shock. Like, he was just laughing for about 20 minutes when I was going, no, no, you can't get Jack Jones back. But... Um, <laughs> But you made a great you made a great success of it. It was wonderful. Yeah. Great night. And, it was a and, fantastic time. Yeah. And you had Busby painting a thermometer because somehow we was raising money on the night. As well, yeah. And the money the money you raised was a hundred grand. Yeah, yeah. They got yeah. forty. So they didn't send the children, they sent the children. And the mums. The, the right. mums and dads, the grandparents. They so they sent everyone. Well done. That was that was great. And that was you sold the tickets through Potters as well. Which, yeah, I mean, Brian also came in with it, didn't he, to say, yeah. look, I'll help with that. So we, we thought it was just you, Mark Holt, and, and Big P, really, wasn't it? To, to, yeah, to, it's to, probably played a big part, but uh, oh, great yeah. night, great it, night. It was, and of course, the old story is the fact that they, uh, they, we went over time and that we wouldn't finish, and they were saying, like, if you're going to cost me even more money, whatever it was, and we're trying to tell them, this is for charity, what are you talking about? And, um, and everyone, but everyone was... All the all the tubes shut and stopped. That's how late. Right. And right. people were having to get taxis home, buses home. We called <laughs> two thousand two hundred people came for that. It was a sellout, wasn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I mean West Ham. Could you remember West Ham? They uh, you caused havoc there. Yeah. yeah. Absolute havoc. I mean, you know? how exciting for a West Ham supporter for you to say to me. Mark, I've just bought a large box um, on the stand. Will you come and host it? I was almost like, what? Come every Saturday. And, of course, in the old days, Potters was only open um, Saturday to Saturday. For Saturday. There was a changeover day. And it was easy. We sort of got up at nine, left at nine, got to you about um, 12 o'clock, um, got set up, got a quick and set up because we were doing PA. And then uh, we always brought guests in, didn't we, like, Special artist for your your. We we had river dance in there once, because in the box we had a stage at one end and a bar at the other. Yeah. And it, they used to sh they used to shut the bar just before kick off, but they didn't realise we had a duplicate key. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we used to drink it out of uh, teacups. And so. um, but we had comedians, we had singers. I mean, uh, we we were naughty. We we had so much fun. And on the very last game of the season, we said, uh, "Let's." You said, "I found a trumpet player." It was Sheffield Wednesday again, and they always bought a drummer and a trumpet player. Yeah. So we asked West Ham if we could get a trumpet player and a, and a drummer. Yeah. We couldn't get a drummer, so we got the trumpet player. But you tell that story. So anyway, this guy was quite an elderly guy, and we said we want to do uh, open up with bubbles. We'll all start singing. Of course, we was on the end of the chicken, like the you know that sort of everybody was going to sing along with us. And sure enough, out he went, and it was a big cheer, and everybody sang bubbles. And uh, and then when when we attacked, I was saying like. Play, play the charge. Da, 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 and when we were, <laughs> when we were, we're defending. He was going da, 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 da. And we was having so much fun with it. But what we didn't realise is the fact that we were still letting him have a drink, weren't we, Neil? And we were giving him a drink, and got to half time, and he's now had good. I don't know. It was just a free drink, so of course this guy got lodged, didn't he? Brandies. He was drinking large brandies because he was a bit nervous. He'd yeah. never played for 40,000 people before. So, lo and behold, this got worse. And as he came on the second half, his trumpet was so out of bad. It was, we ended up being booed. They were throwing, they were throwing coins at us. <laughs> I know. Well, that was, I mean, Johnny Wade was collecting them up because that was like profit to him. That was, that was profit. But, yeah, it was the chaos we had, and we had lots. And we used to give Man and Max award away, didn't we? It was five envelopes. And do you remember when we used to have any singer, including all the West, like Andy Maces, all the people of, like Rachel, used to say, "Come on, come and sing." And they thought they'd walk him in singing a song for the lounge. But I didn't know that Neil had passed all the, the bread rolls out to everyone. And no sooner they started singing a note, oh, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. It sounds chaotic, but you know. Yeah. But no. we haven't. We've never grown up, have we, Neil? No, 
no, no, no, very funny. I mean, every time I see that uh, scene from, I've got to tell you, the, the scene from uh, Life of Brian, the yeah. uh, Roderick scene, I think of you. Of course. Because yeah. you invited me to Scotland to uh, be god godparent to Roddy. Yeah. And we, we were in the church, about 50 of us, I think. And uh, the, the priest or vicar said uh, to yourself, I'm going to name your son now. Would you repeat after me? And he said, uh, Mark, please repeat after me your son's name. Roddy, you went Woody. Uh, Ryan, Ryan, Boa, Boa. The whole church just burst out laughing. <laughs> and I'm looking at my wife. I mean, who would name their child Woody, Ryan, Boa? <laughs> That's how sick she was. Neil, I want to bring up one thing that I just remembered as, we, as you were talking there. We used to do a lot of wind-ups together. Do you, uh, do you remember you uh, used to have fantastic garden parties? And to believe, believe it or not, you still do have a, a generally a yearly garden party. But uh, this was at Navestock side, and you sent me an invitation for it. And then, of course, what you didn't know is that I'd copied the invitations perfectly went to a printer and said, can you print me out another 25, 30 of these? And so I sent out these invitations to people like Hinge and Brackett and Harry and to all these great guests. I was trying to find people who live in Essex that they could actually go. And he was at this garden party and these people were coming in with their invitations and, and your face was one of the greatest, greatest pictures because you were you saying, and, and you are, and you are. And if anybody would have known Hinge and Brackett, I mean, they really were two lovely little old ladies that uh, I couldn't believe that Harry brought them. Uh, they were in the 90s, weren't they, like 80s and to the 90s. And you were like, could not believe I'd done you a kipper by inviting ever so many more people to your garden party. Still can't laugh now. I <laughs> 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 and, and Claire always said to remind you, so that, as everybody I want, might not know, I'm not a drinker, I, I really don't drink, I've never been one, but Neil always says that you're the only person who's actually seen me drunk. Yes, you, was think, you thought you were drinking milkshakes and you were drinking Baileys. Yeah, and I was drinking Baileys and I was... Oh, never, never, no one ever wants to see you drunk. Well, and that's my point, because you said I, I got very loud. <laughs> Well, you are very loud and you get on my nerves, but this was so loud. <laughs> I mean, that's unbelievable. Isn't it? I mean, like, people think like Mark Brewer is loud, but when I've had a drink, guys, and I'm truthfully, Neil's only one who caught me once because I didn't realise I was drinking Baileys. And yeah, I have been very, very loud on the time. I'm the same, Neil. Yeah, my wife. Yes, yeah, uh, you're the same. Yes, Claire. Yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe Good that. Yeah. Oh, um, one last thing. Anything? Uh, anything you want to bring up before I say thank you for coming on, Neil? Because uh, I was going to only, say only that people don't realise, Mark, uh, what you do for charity, and and they should. I mean, things outside of potters, you do so much. I mean, uh, apart from chocolate, you love a funeral as well. I mean, <laughs> anyone who dies at potters, you must go to their funeral. You've been to more funerals than Henry VIII's man. That's. <laughs> <laughs> You have um, you've spoiled us and I'm in my lifetime. You're a, a very generous, um, good hearted, and you've spoiled a lot of people in your time, including me. And you had probably the greatest fantasy wedding that anyone could believe. You said flew us over to Knock Airport, and we all got out. and It must have been probably 100 of us, wasn't there? It must have been something like that. We all took up. We all took up the rooms of Ashford Castle. Um, Roddy was a page boy. Sky was a bridesmaid, and we had one of the most fantastic weddings I've ever seen. With from two days of it as well. It wasn't like a one day hit. And I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart of all those special moments. The Orient Express Claire shouting. Um, there they are. Neil, you're, you're generally a true mate. We've had our highs and our lows, but we've always been there. Thank you. Love you. In each other. <laughs> Neil, thank you for chatting to me. I'm going to say goodbye to you. You're a great mate. Darling, see you well, soon. And Roddy, don't be gay now. Roddy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he right. dies, you in his will. I'll, I'll get your Rolex.
<laughs> See you soon. Lots of love, Neil. Come and love to Shaz. Ah, so there we are. Some insights of what we were like, what we've been like, the teasing. Gavin Bates has said, please say happy birthday to my daddy. Gavin, uh, love from Sarah, Samuel, Joanna. So Gavin Bates, a big happy birthday to you from the kids and the family. Um, so we're really, uh, Michelle warns, how great was the play? I mean, it was exciting, wasn't it? Um, there are stories about the Palladium, but we'll have to. I'll have to remind it and, and talk about it because we're running out of time. Went on forever, to be honest, we could have gone on forever there, and I better thought we better chat it. So look, um, one lady is coming up to try and take on Claire Gibson. How smart can you be? So with that in mind, uh, let's hello to Lynn uh, Lynn Orca. Is it Lynn Orca? I'm sure it was Lynn. Hi, Mark. Hi, darling, and you're one of our Facebook fans from uh, from many, many, many years and months. You know this little community of Potter's Facebook fans from the walls, Lynn and so it goes on and on, doesn't it? Yeah, they're all good friends. Yeah, it's a little family, but you are being brave enough to make sure that you, you've only got to get three correct answers. <laughs> sure, surely you can get three correct answers. I'm going to step out to the sky. Um, can come in. Nice crown, Lynn. Is that what you're wearing? A tarawa? <laughs> oh, just for you. Yeah, yeah just for me. That, that's beautiful. Emeralds. Now, Lynn, as you know, we have to time it. Ready? Get I'm ready with the ready. clock. Get the clock ready. And remember, these are kids' questions. <laughs> and I haven't got my glasses on, so I won't be able to hear you properly. Uh, well, that makes sense. I'm glad you <laughs> brought that up, Lynn. I'm glad you brought it up. So, are you ready? Yes. Lynn, are you smarter than Claire Gibson starting now, Sky? What colour are sapphires? Blue. What is the coloured part of the eye that surrounds the pupil? Iris. What oh. film are the characters Frozone, Elastigirl and Edna Mode from? Incredibles. How many teeth should an adult have, including their wisdom teeth? 32. Yes. What are the three primary colours? Red, green. No. Keep no. going. Move on. Move on. What are the two longest rivers in the world? The Yangtze and the Nile. Yeah, forget that. Move on. We, we're going of back. Which country is Brussels the capital? Belgium. What is a group of kangaroos called? A leap. Which what? famous building did Guy Fawkes try to blow up? The Houses of Parliament. What is the smallest ocean in the world? The Indian Ocean. Cut. Well done. Is it? I saw Arctic. It no, it's not. It was yeah. Arctic. How many did you get wrong? Hey, Lynn. She got loads. You are far too clever <laughs> um, for the Claire Gibson. And, and I can't believe you was wild about it. You scored, Lynn. <laughs> Six. Six. Yeah, well done, Lynn. Well done. And Claire Thank Gibson you. is moaning that hers were not kids' questions. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, Claire. People, we've sent it out there, Claire. Everybody's been watching that video. Everybody knows those answers now. And they realise that even Bruno, who was three, answered two of them that you got wrong. <laughs> Lynn, anything, uh, anyone do you want to shout out for anyone before we say goodbye? All my Potter's friends, but a special thank you to yourselves, all the brewers, for all the fun and games that you're doing. Johnny uh, Love, everybody. It's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you, Lynn. We're going to say goodbye to you. Thanks for coming on. And you are not. You are much brighter than uh, Claire Gibson. Thanks for being thank out. Hi, Claire. I mean, Lynn. <laughs> say goodbye. <laughs> See you, Lynn. Da -da, darling. Well, that's it for today. It's Saturday and tomorrow, tomorrow being Sunday. Who was I planning to bring on tomorrow? Um, I don't know. I thought I wrote it down, but I'm going to let you know. I'm actually trying to get David Patience. I don't know if David Carroll, if you're listening. I don't know if you're there. I'm trying to talk. And uh, we'll see if we can get Craig Lovett, who used to work for Potters, and he's now a sergeant. Um, in the police force, so we're hoping we're hoping he's going to tell us not the inside out, but how how is it going uh, out there? How are people behaving? So, cattle patients, 
can we speak to you and David tomorrow? We're going to have a quick chat, and I want to talk about how David was introduced to me at West Ham by the one and only um, Martin Peters, bless him, who sadly passed away. Um, Maureen saying another great show. Uh, thank you, darling. Thank you for everyone who's uh, there, who's been watching us. And you can say goodbye on your big screens. We'll look forward to talking to you tomorrow. It's Saturday, everybody. It's May the 2nd. So uh, take care. Thank you for joining us. Dan Looney, Neil Davy, Neil Westgate, and of course, Lynn Orca. To all of you, thank you. Not James Hearn. He only appeared once. Normally, at least has two, twice. But there you are. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Tara. Bye. And uh, thank you to Nigel and everyone. Go to a Potter's Facebook and have a look at what we're doing live with there. But Nigel, take care, everybody.